Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 100. Can you believe it? We made it that far where you send me your email questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. This one's called Model. Mark, you're familiar with game software, right? Can you not make a size model of our Earth is supposed to be? A 25,000 in circumference globe and add buildings, but without atmosphere. Use a person six foot tall to scale and have him rise up. It's just geometry. Wouldn't that give a good perspective of how the Earth would look the higher we go? As far as the 11 slides go, it's 12. 11 slides go what are they can you send them uh, all right first off uh yes i used to do software development not really that seriously though i mean a little web design here and a little stuff there uh i worked with a lot of software developers and yes i did get to know a lot about it uh back in 2015 uh when i was trying to build in closedworld.com but no, I'm not going to try to build a three-dimensional rendered program that that can show the the Earth. That that would take way too long. And besides, it's already out there. There's there are perspective software packages out there which you can buy and use. Uh, in fact, several people have done videos on it showing what it would look like. And so, not to mention, there's Google Earth, which, yeah, I know it only gives really a vantage point from far, far away. But still. It, there, there's stuff out there. I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel. This one's called something. What's it called? Oh, it's called, sorry. That is a link to watch Hank Brem on YouTube. And he wants me to subscribe to his channel. So I will take a look at that. This one is called Beautiful Flat Earth App. And that was sent by Laurel Austin. Mark, I downloaded this app called Flat Earth Sun and Moon to get your daily and hourly hands moving. It's only $2.99. You can also choose different backgrounds. Don't mean to sound like a commercial, but I am loving this app. Sent by Laurel Austin, who I met at the Flat Earth Conference in Denver this year. And she's a lovely woman. And uh, uh, what they're talking about is the, the app that I'm pretty sure it's the one that DITRH made, which I'm going to start linking in my descriptions because it's really is slick. I, I don't know if he who he had do it or if he did it himself, but it is a really, really slick app. Um, it's, it's basically a flat earth clock. I think we're talking about the same one. Ooh, well, hopefully I'm talking about the same one. Anyway, you'll see it in my description. Uh, eventually, DITRH said they're doing a, a big update to it today, but uh, it's very, very slick. Now, I won't have it on my phone, but that has nothing in, against the app. It's just I use my phone as a phone. That's it. I don't use it for anything else. I, I literally don't use it. I don't, don't use it for anything but calling people because I'm old school because I am old. But thank you for that, Laurel. This one is called uh, the SafeNet Meetup November 25th has been canceled. Uh, hello, Mark. Please update the November 25th meetup canceled. Uh, SafeNet will reschedule. That's in San Antonio, by the way. And what appears to have happened is, because he sent me a voicemail yesterday as well, is that that room has been double booked. That happens from time to time. Uh, you get a member if you're going to reserve a room for something flat earth make sure you reserve it don't just say oh yeah we totally got this room because murphy's law says eventually someone else is going to be it happens all the time so this one is called and so i already pulled down the the video if you guys didn't already know the, there so there was a san antonio meetup there and i pulled it until they figured out which room they're going to meet in and they're doing it i think once a month right now kind of like what the four Collins people were doing this one's called Best Part of the Space Program. Mark, I was six years old and remember quite well the excitement and merchandising of the first moon landing. Here is my list of the best things from NASA. The Viewmaster with 3D pics. I spent countless hours spinning NASA pic pictures in my Viewmaster. Oh yeah, Viewmaster. If you're old enough to remember Viewmasters, well, you're pretty special. Uh, Tang, the breakfast drink. I don't know how many gallons of orange Tang I drank back then. That's when they came out with grape flavor. It sucked. My dad would sprinkle a spoonful of that orange powder in his vanilla ice cream. Oh, oh, that sounds horrible. That sounds way too tart. Uh, 
Space food sticks. Mom always packed them in my Apollo lunchbox. Amazing how deep the globe programming goes. Flat Earth is really like coming out of the Matrix. And that's one Frank. Thank you, Frank. This one's called Tom is trying to understand space and volcanoes. Mark, all the details of space, black holes, pulsars, neutron stars, etc., etc. Ground hotter, further you go underground, diamond mines very hot. What is causing the heat? Gravity and iron core. PhD graduated astronomers, and they are just seeing the projected details of space on the roof of the enclosure. Help me understand, please, Tom. And did he send me, he sent me an attachment and it is four megs and it shows, oh yeah, it's just a picture of looking skyline, just looking up at the, up at the sky. Uh, yeah, it looked, there's something that Tesla said years ago, which was, uh, scientists tend to build things on each other's equations without checking the, the foundation that it was initially built on. And it just keeps getting higher and higher until eventually the, the equations that they, they have are, are based off of nothing. It's just meaningless. And that's what uh, all the astronomers and astrophysicists have done, which is, yeah, they, they, they say once the, first, once the first group of people said, oh, yeah, space is established, then nobody else questions it. And they say, oh, let's just let's just expand off from there. And so let's talk about it until where now we're just making up stuff. Uh, if anyone has any doubt, look up dark matter. That is one of the new thing, well, fairly new in the world of astronomy, new things where they are saying that dark matter fills in all the gaps that they can't figure out. It's this mysterious thing that that no one ever, it's theoretical, absolutely theoretical. But they're eventually, if you say it long enough, it will be in the science books as established fact. So, yeah, sorry. I, not much I can do for the people that with a master's degree in a physical science. Uh, they're lost the, until the mainstream media comes out and says, oh, yeah, by the way, we're in a building. They're not going to buy it. There's, there's nothing you can do for them. Luckily, there's not that many of them either. We outnumber them by a great deal. This one's called Globe Earth Mind Control, and it's a video link. Mark, when you have a, mu a few minutes, start at the 5 minutes 30 second mark. Listen for about 6 or 7 minutes. I can see a direct correlation in Globe Earth Mind Control programming and the danger of flat earth, that Flat Earth poses to it. Best, Frank, and the video is called Unlocking the Safe of Secrets, Recognizing the Warlocks. Ooh, that's a creepy sounding title and it's from war drummer official yeah he's got eighty thousand subs so that's kind of fun this one's called flat earth robitussin commercial new oh yeah i'm totally gonna save this one hello mark this is flathead politics check out this robitussin flat earth commercial and you can it's i don't know if it's on youtube yet but it's on ispot tv um robitussin robitussin max severe flat earth and it's pretty funny, uh, and that is, it's it's an old world, you know, when they, it's kind of a reference to old world ships, the the myth that they would fall off the edge. Uh, it's it's done pretty well. So if you have a chance, look up the Robitussin commercial. I'm going to rip it if I get a chance and put it into something that I use. It's it's pretty funny. Normally you can use commercials that, you know, the, anything, because they, they um, the, the people that make them, they don't care about copyrights because they like, you know, it's commercials. They want it out there. And it's pretty good. Uh, this one's called Latest Flat Earth Clues Interview Number 176. Good, which I did just last night with the University of Victoria. Some five students, they called me up from a university podcast and said, let's talk about it. And, and you could tell that one or two of them out of the five really didn't like this idea. And they started coming at me. And for an hour, we went back and forth. So it's kind of fun if you get a chance, listen to it, and you can see how how a conversation, how quickly it can turn. You know, it's, it was polite in the beginning, and then all of a sudden the outrage just got too much for, for two of them, and they started coming in. Um, Mark, they started off asking basic questions, then roughly halfway through the interview, they flipped on you. I think their cognitive dissonance started kicking in. They started to get heated when you explained why the moon missions were faked and the old how dare you question the deaths of people from the Challenger mission. But like you said, give them a few weeks of serious research and they'll be flat earthers too. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, in fact, it's it's interesting that a lot of the outrage will stem from the 1986 Challenger disaster where they're saying, you know, you're, you're not... 
you're not respecting the death of those astronauts. I'm going, no, no, no. And what I'm saying is they didn't die. And yes, they were put into a, you know, a kind of a weird witness relocation program where they're still out in public and you can still find them. It's not like they're hidden forever because they're not hidden from organized crime. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're absolutely out there still roaming around. And no, I, and they asked me, would I have any problem ta- telling this to the families? No, of course I wouldn't. Why would I? I, in fact, I would think it'd be good news for the families, but uh, anyway, they, you'll understand when you listen to it. It's about an hour long, totally worth it. It's, uh, you can see where, and, and the, all these are university age. So 20, 21, but thank you for that. That's from Jason. This one's called, please send me the paper. Mark, please send me the paper you spoke of in your most recent post. And that's from Crit Killen. I don't know if... It, oh, I get it. That's a gaming reference, right? So, uh, yeah, what we're talking about is a paper called uh, Harmony, which was written by the air tra- traffic controller. When uh, and, and he was... It was in a, the reason why I mentioned it is because he was in, comparing notes with a flight instructor on one of my shows and he mentioned that he wrote this kind of this unified paper it's not light reading guys i mean you can ask for it if you want but honestly i have yet to receive an email saying wow that paper absolutely changed my life because it it would if you read it late at night you're going to go to sleep in two seconds it's just it's heavy heavy reading but hey if you're up for it i'll send it to you this one's called no subject. Hey, Mark, can't find the, your Flat Earth Clues interview 148 for creating uh, the playlist on my channel. Uh, is there some interview you need to send seeking a preferred Admiral Byrd interview? As always, if not said, it's implied. Thank you for now. And that's from Dennis. And uh, yeah, interview 148, if you guys are going through my interviews, that's the one where I was doing um, a national, a, a Britain show in London called Good Morning Britain which is like Good Morning America, only it's in the UK, and with Piers Morgan as the host, and he has co host there, and they brought on Terry Verts into the studio. And so Terry Verts was sitting next to Piers Morgan. And I grabbed the video off of it, but within, I think, two days, three days, they blocked it. I didn't get a copyright strike, but they, they blocked it. And you can't use it on YouTube. I, I, in fact, even if I reversed mirror, mirrored image, it, it'd still probably get blocked. Uh, but if you guys want it, by all means, I'll send it to you. I mean, it's it's an okay interview, and i got to stress uh, the reason um, why, because people say, why didn't you attack Terry as, as much as you could? I was going, well, because I was coming in through Skype, and producers, you know, they have their finger on the kill switch at all times, and uh, couldn't do it. I mean, my goal literally, plus it's Piers Morgan, a man cannot be trusted when it comes to interviews. That guy can turn on you. I've seen it many, many times. I was going, oh, great. You know, it's, it's one of those things where Piers... Now, luckily, it was first thing in the morning. Actually, it wasn't first thing in the morning. Yes, it was. For, for him, it was it was first thing in the morning. It was the middle of the night for me. Uh, but he, yeah, I didn't... My goal was to literally make it through the entire segment without being cut off. And I did. So I consider it a success. If you don't, that's fine. Uh, but it was, I think the exposure was, uh, was completely worth it. And I did what I could, but I could tell that Terry, Terry Verts, our retired U S astronaut, uh, was not going to be able to answer those questions. And Pierce was deferring as well. He was, he was helping Terry out, making sure he didn't get to answer the questions and you can listen to it yourself. So, but if you want, I will send you, I can send it through WeTransfer. It's only about 40 megs. I will send you the video clip of that interview if you're curious it's just all you have to do is say hey i want a uh, good morning britain or interview 148 and i'll shoot it to you because i've got it this one's called survival guide please nothing else to say thanks joe trimble okay if you want the survival guide called empty shelves all you have to do is what he did just send me an email With that in mind, uh, this one's called Podcast Interview with University of Victoria and my appreciation for your efforts. Dear Mark, just a quick note to offer my two cents on things. Firstly, I wanted to tell you how much I appreciate that you kept your cool with the children from the Victoria University during their playtime interview on their podcast. No, no, no. These are five guys and they seem to be okay. Uh, but anyway, we'll keep going with the email. You're a better man than I, Mark. I know I don't lose my cool, but that's because I, I treat my temper like a fine wine. Uh, if I ever finally lose my cool, you'll know it because 
uh, what's the line from uh, from Sixth Sense? I I see dead people. That's pretty much it. If I ever lose my cool, God help anyone that's around the area because I'll probably develop some sort of bloodlust. Uh, I met you in Denver at the conference. Firstly, at the billboard, I'm the guy from Alberta, eh? And felt that you are very personable and approachable and would have loved the opportunity to talk privately with you at length about this stuff. Would be nice if I could phone you sometime and pick your brain. I did, however, leave you a text message offering my support for your stance against the douchebag Logan Paul uh, being at the conference. Secondly, and for what little my opinion is actually worth as a person who understands the reasons why is it impossible for the earth to be a warm positive pressure pressure system shaped like a ball existing unisolated inside a cold negative pressure system i tend to think that the flatters community ought to focus more on the impossibilities of the official story model of how the earth exists and focus less on the conspiracy aspects even though they be true as well <laughs> they be true my personal disdain for the overused and washed out term conspiracy is enormous and i believe that in order to shift more people's thoughts over towards our understandings of things when trying to introduce them to FE, we need to focus more on the non-conspiratorial aspects of why this unisolated sphere model simply can't be accurate and maybe less on the NASA stuff. As witnessed during the kids' playtime interview, and of course in our daily lives, people will frantically pull stuff out of their asses in order to wave their flags of indoctrination. It affords them a perceived measure of safety. It's the groupthink phenomena. As somebody who has been up to my eyeballs in global conspiracies for many, many years, I'm aware of how obvious it is that the population lives within a programmed false perception of reality. Perhaps like you, and I know this and never give it a thought to the contrary, but most of the population can't and won't succumb to this realization for a number of reasons, all fear-based and emotional, such as children that uh, interviewed you from <laughs> University of Victoria. I know you call them children, and yes, they were probably 21 or younger. Oh, come on, come on, man. They, they, they doing a podcast, they called. Uh, in a way, I think the totality of the information that people like us have acquired is entirely overwhelming to the average individual and cannot be consumed and digested properly. They need concrete evidence that is tangible and evident in their daily lives and that they cannot skirt around with emotional rhetoric. Please understand that I am fully aware how the Flat Earth clues function as compilations of such hard evidences existing right under people's noses, but somehow the conversations always shift to conspiratorial evidences, which, in my opinion, then shifts the focus away from the meat and potatoes of what we're discussing here. Therefore, I think the whole package of information concerning FE needs to be laid out in a more step-by-step -step fashion, whereupon the understanding of each step of evidence is prerequisite to the next step, consider the Victoria University children... <laughs> He won't stop on these guys, will he? Uh, seriously, if you guys want to listen to it, it's it's pretty funny. Um, interview 176, I just put it up last night. During my career in power engineering, especially while in petrochemicals, I've had to learn about and then train people in the operation of complex process environments and systems. The way to do that is to start at the bottom, the basics, and work your way up. I absolutely agree with you here. Uh, building upon each step, not by dancing around 47 different ideas simultaneously. For me, one of the first steps I took towards questioning the actual structure of our world was knowing that a hot pressurized system of gas and moisture absolutely cannot exist within a dry and dramatically lower temp pressure system without some form of secure isolation. And what he's basically saying there is that pressure needs a container, period. You can't have pressure without a container. Uh, and I'm to again, totally giving credit to Nathan Oakley out in the UK for that. And when I met Robert Sengenis at the FE conference after the debate and tried to discuss this particular item with him, he simply repeated the gravity mantra and eventually just walked away without actually saying much of anything. Quite simply, the relationship between hot and cold and positive pressure vacuum cannot be avoided or skirted around. And I personally believe this needs to be focused upon more than it currently is. I suppose I'm just rambling here and I'm not really offering any sort of positive contribution, but as a man who gets it, the all-encompassing web of systems and lies designed to encapsulate human thought and perceptions of reality, I can't help but feel that the way the Flat Earth is presented and discussed could be further tweaked or organized in such a way that is better suited for the average person who simply isn't prepared to begin his journey under the current perceptions rooted in indoctrination. Most TV watchers and Black Friday shoppers out there do not perceive a need to question the nature of their existence. We need to get them to a place where they see and understand that there is a need to do so. 
I sat with Zulu One in the VIP section quite a bit at the conference and learned from him how it was that he became involved with this and you. I, it reinforced how down to earth you are and the motives behind your efforts. So as an offering, if there is anything I can do to assist with your work, please let me know that I would, um, uh, that I would welcome the opportunity to become involved. Kindest regards, Darren. Cool, Darren. Thank you for that. And a uh, wonderful letter. And uh, yeah, I mean, being involved really at this point, it is spreading the word. You know, get do some do some hangouts, you know, talk to some people, uh, go to a meetup. I mean, you've already gone to the conference, so you, you kind of get the, the gist of it, obviously. And you're willing to go up to Syngenis and, and start talking to him about pressure versus gravity. So you're you're already there. You're already doing what you can, and just just keep doing what you're doing. Don't don't change a thing. So that's that's my advice for you right now. Moving on. All right, we're jumping down to the archives again. The goal is to clear all these things out, and I'm not going to throw them away. I mean, I throw quite a few few emails away, but I'm not. You know, but the ones I have saved so far, I'm definitely going to read. Oh, this one's called Time Zones. Hey, Mark, can you comment on the established time zones and specifically the United States and Australia? If they are basically the same size, should not the radial designation become so vast that Australia there would only be one time zone in the flat Earth model? Not questioning your points, just not have not heard this talked about. Thanks, LH from Michigan. And yeah, there's actually a wonderful uh, flat Earth model, and I, I'm not going to be able to do it justice, where the... Uh, time zones are laid out in sort of this cool radial pattern. But remember, the sun is super, super small. And as far as the perspective goes, uh, laid out on the a AE map, we don't have it all figured out yet. We've got a lot of it figured out, and we've got some really, really great basic ideas. But I, I can't give you any more details than that right now. But Australia is there. It's the size it should be. I don't think it's an illusion. Uh, I don't think there's any weird scaling issue that's happening in Australia. I just don't think we know the whole map yet. Moving on. This one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Would it be possible to send me a PDF copy of the guide to survival with regards to your empty shelves video circa 2015? Kind regards, Anthony Smith, Manchester, UK. <laughs> I love British people. <laughs> They're so formal about it. Americans be like, send me the damn survival guide. Yeah, like we're, we're still living in the Old West, right? Uh, whereas British people, they always just sound so much more credible. Just are, that, again, that's conditioning. We've just heard it over the years. When, when there's a British television show, it's obviously more credible, right? <laughs> this one's called ISS Potentially Be Brought Down? Question mark. Hi, Mark. I listened uh, to my first live show last night. I called in, but had to get to bed before I got on. Two weeks ago, I started from the beginning of Strange World. I'm up to episode 35 as of now. I have, without a doubt, uh, that we live on a plane. Thank you for everything you've done. What I was going to ask about last night and the possibility of the, of the ISS be unoccupied in the near future. Do you think there will be a big show of space shuttle coming back to Earth with remaining astronauts. Okay, first off, there is no space shuttle program anymore. They, 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 for several years now, they've just discontinued it without really telling anybody. Uh, do you think that NASA would bring the ISS down from its orbit and possibly shut the whole thing down? I feel if they were to do this, they would go dark without admitting it was all a hoax and es escape the news. Yeah, it's, it's well within the realm of possibility. Absolutely. The uh, the ISS production value is terrible. Always has been, and we just didn't notice until recently. And uh, it would, if it was me, yes, I would find a way to get rid of the ISS. That's what I would do. Uh, somehow, some sort of disaster. I mean, we already had the movie Gravity with George Clooney and, and Sandra Bullock. And it, that kind of touched on that, so why not, right? Um it, the letter continues with the tiny hole they found and plugged that thing should have exploded there wouldn't have been and oh crap we have to fix this moment because of how pressure differential works best regards brian hoffman in baltimore uh, yeah you're absolutely right the the hole was an absolute joke not only that but the um i think it was tim peak that or was it chris hatfield uh i think i'll, I'll say chris hatfield he was the one that published a hole that NASA used years and years ago. I mean, like over a decade ago, 
they, he published, he tweeted that that hole and said, "Oh yeah, you know." It, it, but you tweet it like a, because it's got a NASA stamp on it, like it was. That's that's what it was. That's it. That's where it, how it happened, and it was happening in real time. It's like no, 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 no. You can't use old pictures, and he never retracted it. I don't think he did anyway. Moving on to Mark from Ben. Sounds like a junior high love letter. Let's try it. Hi, Mark. I have been following your work for many years. I started listening to you and also your counterparts. The elites control everything. This is an undisputable fact. They control the mainstream media. They do not wish to allow even a worthwhile debate because they know that they will lose the debate very quickly. They send media guys to the Flat Earth Conference to ridicule Flat Earth to enhance the definition conspiracy theorists and so forth. This letter does not in any way try to undermine or deflate your efforts other than to sharpen the issue and the problem of the mainstream paradigm propaganda machine that we face. My point is to try to get scientists to debate Flat Earth. The science guys, Bill Nye, and those sore bunch of jokes are gatekeepers to protect and keep the globe propaganda lie alive to general public. I would like to attend the FE conference, but not to fly to the U. But do not fly to the U.S. anymore due to the forceful taking of biometrics and body lethal health scans. Do you really think the elites are going to let the world know the truth? Not a chance. This does not mean that the FE awakening to the truth should be stifled. What are the options? I do not have all the answers. All I can say is to continue the work you are doing. When confronted by a mainstream media guy, use the definition gatekeepers. The only real solid thing left to do now is to go to Antarctica somehow to prove the FE. Will that happen? Best wishes, Ben. Uh, no, I don't think anyone's going to be going to the Antarctica anytime soon. Uh, the treaty is ridiculously strong, if anyone has any doubts. Uh, go to Rob Skiba's channel, and he's mirrored some other channels that have really dug into uh, you know, the, the if we call it the chapter and verse of the Antarctic Treaty. It is no joke. It costs an amazing amount of money. There's a ton of time involved, and you have to have multiple nations sign off of it. Uh, no, what we've been doing is great, I, which is why, you know, do your own research, do your own experiments. The the experiments we've been doing so far have been convincing a lot of people. Heck, the, the going to the beach with the digital camera, that alone has converted millions because it wasn't my suggestion. It was just people just running out to the beach saying, oh, wait, there can't be eight, inch, eight inches per mile squared. And they started digital zooming into boats and lighthouses and land masses. And it's just been amazing. So, no, what we're doing is we're making the difference already. I mean, there's the reason why this has been steamrolling now for three years to where YouTube, you know, tore down their own scoreboard. And, you know, we have conferences and we have hundreds of meetups and, you know, the documentary came out and there's more documentaries in the future is because it resonates. And the reason why it resonates is because we have made Flat Earth easier to understand than the globe. Plain and simple. Uh, there is no <clears throat> there is no easier answer than that, which is the, the globe in order to try to explain the globe to somebody. And by that, it doesn't exist on its own. Uh, the solar system and the galaxy and the universe around it. You have to use geometry and trigonometry and calculus and quantum physics and stuff that most people have no. I mean, you, they could study for 10 years and wouldn't even begin to get their hand, head around it. In fact, um, what's the old scientist saying? If quantum physics does not confuse you. Um, then there's something wrong because it, it confuses everybody. So why people don't don't like that? And and the flat Earth model is very very easy to understand. People like easy. And I mentioned this in the the interview last night, which is uh, Sun Tzu, the Art of War. That's um, that great Asian uh, book on military strategy. One of the things that stuck with me there was that is that people are like water. They always take the path of least resistance. It is why you text instead of call people. It is why you use microwave popcorn instead of cooking it on the stove. And it is why you understand flat earth because flat earth is easy to understand than the alternative, which is this tiny little rock flying through an impossible universe and that you're nobody. So there you go. This one's called 1885. Okay. I'm curious. Hi again, Mark. Stumbled over this article and just wanted to see if you might find it interesting. Supposedly, it's from 1885 London newspaper. All the best, Johan. And let's see here. It says Earth is round and he may be thrown into prison. Uh, condition of affairs in England. The 
John Gerst accused of intention to something something uh city yeah yeah interesting yeah could very positive I mean again flat earth is not a brand new concept what we're doing is flat earth 2.0 that's the big difference uh beforehand flat earth was just kind of simmering on the stove uh, for a long long time and not really doing much and when social media came around we really took it to the next level and that's where we're going to you know, we're going to continue to just keep building on that this one's called flight paths mark i've been a listener for a while now after listening to the segment on flight paths in the southern hemisphere i got to thinking if the earth rotates counterclockwise at a thousand miles an hour all flights would have to head west my thought <coughs> excuse me i'm gonna have to get some lemonade here to continue, uh, my thought process is that if you fly west, you kind of just hang out in the air and the earth will rotate underneath you, bringing the destination to you. Yeah, I know this is an old argument. If you went the opposite direction, commercial planes won't go fast enough at, to outrun the rotation of the earth to reach their destinations. And as the earth rotated, the destination would come from behind the plane. Have you had any research around this idea? Yes. Yes, I have, and it doesn't happen ever. And so it, since it doesn't happen, does that prove the flat earth? No, but it really puts into question uh, the earth is rotating. Also look up uh, projectiles, you know, uh, when exactly does a plane fly fast enough to escape the gravitational forces of the earth or even moderately kind of like bend away from the gravitational forces of the earth? Um, when does that happen? Doesn't. When does a bullet do that it's yeah, tough stuff this one's called flat earth photo real rendering ability hey mark thanks so much for being a voice for other models of earth i want to offer my service to the cause i'm a visualiz visualization and render professional i create photo real imagery <clears throat> for real estate developers uh, my site is bartservices.com. That's B-A-A-R-T services.com. All the images are computer generated. I'm planning to start another YouTube channel devoted to creating a physically correct 3D model and two major models of Earth and let them be the decision makers. I can simulate lighting to be physically correct as well as scale. Here are a couple images I created using 3DS Max and V-Ray this morning in about 30 minutes. I have this scene rendered in every angle, most of which NASA will never show. I hope this is helpful, and whether we can work together on any project, I leave it to you. Hope to talk, Ben. You know what? That is going in my to-do pile. And I will take a look, because he sent it to me in Dropbox. Hopefully it's still there, and I'm sorry that I haven't gotten it until now, but, well, them's the breaks. This one's called, Thank You for Your Research. Mark, the subject matter of flat earth has been on my radar since I began to research the concept of hollow earth, which is also a hot topic for many. I'm writing today to assist you to expand your thought process even further by plugging into Quantum Shift, show which you can find on YouTube. Okay, so it's a show called Quantum Shift. Kent Dunn, who is one of the guest speakers on this show, is one who has been talking about flat earth for months now. Drake Bailey and Dr. Sam also agree with this perspective. I believe that you will find this show of great interest to you. You can also find them on kcoreradio.com. I think I've heard of KCore. In fact, have I done something with KCore? I may have. According to Kent Dunn, this is a biosphere ship called Ship Terra. Ooh, cool. Which is thousands of miles wide and thousands of miles deep. There is also a hollow earth that also exists deep below. This is not a planet. As you st State, I don't state, and many of the movies out of Hollywood are giving us clues to our rea to our reality, as you do mention the Truman Show. Lastly, since you are exposing the real truth, our ascended master's real name is Yeshua. I've heard this, and not the fake name of Jesus. Which, by the way, there is not even the letter J in the Hebrew language. Yes, I also knew that. It's the other big lie that the powers that be have used to control and manipulate the masses the control i'm sorry the name of yeshua has such a high vibrational rate that they scrub that name from all biblical editions which were all rewritten 
beginning during Constantine's rule. All you have to do is listen to any of the fake cabal preachers and count how many times they'll repeat that fake name. It will make you sick, literally. Also, once you begin to pray in the name of Yeshua, you will immediately feel this calm and the biggest difference. Again, thank you for making your material very credible to share with those who initially have a difficult time wrapping their heads around this big blue lie. What you may want to do is look at how the 5G horror show, yeah, I know the 5G thing, I'm on a really old iPhone, so I'm not too worried, will affect all of us inside the biosphere. Thank you, Mary. Cool, thank you for that, Mary. <clears throat> this one's called Watch Asteroid Strikes the Moon on YouTube. And it's a link to the video, which is called Asteroid Strikes the Moon. It's all the way back from February of 2017. Yeah, not buying it. Uh, and it was sent by Matt Evans. And no, yeah, I'm just not buying it. Sorry. If an asteroid strikes the moon, a couple things there. First off, Remember, all the moon craters appear to have come into the moon at 90 degree angles. Uh, you do not see a skidding moon crater. They all kind of seem like they're coming in straight down, uh, like the moon was decorated in that regard. So, uh, statistically speaking, uh, it's very, very, very unlikely uh, that all the asteroids would, would come in or meteors would come in at, at right angles. But they do, supposedly. So how does that work? Sorry, not not buying it. This one's called Neil deGrasse Tyson question. Hi, Mark. We've corresponded some when I first started questioning. Can you help me find a link to where Neil, to Neil, where he basically scolds a group of scholars that a percentage of them still believe in a personal God? I can't find it, but used to be able to. And that's from Karsten. I, I don't know off, off the top of my head if, if somebody... Neil's made, made several references in his public speaking engagements against God. So if anyone has, has one that sticks out, let me know and I will, um, I will forward it off to this person. This one's called YouTube Shut Down Due to Moon Impact Project Blue Beam. Yeah, okay. Uh, this will make sense here in a second. Hi, Mark. Okay to read on air. Today is October 18th, 2018. In this video and several others, there is a theory presented that the YouTube shutdown was to contain and delete a video going viral in which a lunar impact was demonstrated. This video shows a night vision cam depicting a serpent, <laughs> serpent or UFOs in formation headed towards the moon. In your experience with night vision, can you comment on what's being shown here? And have you heard anything about Lunar Impact viral video that was quarantined and deleted from YouTube during its downtime? Thanks, Jack. Uh, no, I don't know anything about it um, as far as the moon impact goes. Uh, I have looked through night vision for years. I got into that way before I was doing flat earth. And unfortunately, the uh, it, true night vision is not not the infrared filters that used during the daytime, which is probably more uh, uh, useful uh, than true night vision. True night vision, even Gen One, is so sensitive that you cannot look at the moon. The moon is just too bright uh, to where it won't blow the blow the lenses on the night vision binoculars, but it will. It will. Your eyes will not feel good. That's for sure. I just couldn't do it. In fact, I had to avoid the. I learned to avoid the moon when looking around the stars and all the things that were flying around up there. But no, I, that's an interesting thought. I hadn't even thought of it that they were trying to. They were that you would shut down YouTube to try to scrub a series of videos. But I will take a look and see if anyone else put it up later. It's kind of tough to scrub anything nowadays because there's so many copies. People just keep re-uploading them. This one's called Chris Hatfield blocked me. Mark, never get drunk and call out Chris Hatfield, the astronaut, on Twitter. He will block you. All I said was, hope you sleep well at night for lying about the Earth. I may have also used a few swear words. <laughs> I kind of feel bad because I'm Canadian. Yeah, I know. And Chris Hatfield's Canadian, too. And there it is. Yep, there's the screenshot. Chris Hatfield, I'm sorry, Commander Hatfield has blocked you. You are blocked from following Commander Hatfield and viewing Commander Hatfield's tweets. Yep. Well, I could meet him one day. This one's called Flyby Nikon, ISS Nikon P900. Hello, Mark. Please check this out. It was sent to me by a friend 
that I debate for a long time that the earth is flat, and my friend is, of course, a globe believer. I showed him the movies from Tolan. Oh, yeah, Jay Tolan Media, he does great movies uh, with the infrared filter during the daytime, especially from planes. With the infrared camera, here we go, and we can see much further than we are supposed to. Uh, a few days ago, he came back to me with a video that he found taken with the same camera. Check it out. Let me know what you think. I will do so. I'll put that in my to-do pile. That is growing today. This one's called Gravity. Hi, Mark. Just my opinion, but I kind of disagree with your thoughts on gravity. You say that when a jet pilot pulls back on a stick, he is pulled back into his seat. Therefore, there has to be gravity. Um, well, if you get into a Bugatti or a, oh boy, a something, something, a Jera RS and put your foot down, the speed of the car going forward on a flat plane will also pull you back into your seat. Not down to the floor, but the direction you are traveling. So for me, I don't see it as gravity, but the speed of the vehicle, be it a plane in the sky or a car in a flat plane plus forward motion, such as the speed along the mass, i.e. your body that forces you back into your seat. I may be wrong, but that's just what I think. Please let me know your thoughts. Many thanks. Kind regards. Um, uh, take care of you and each other. Andy. Uh, yeah, no, Andy, it's the same thing. Uh, whether you're in a high, you know, it doesn't have to be a really high-end sports car. Um, it's something, there is a force that is either pushing you back. It's called a G-force, right? And I know people say, well, there, there can't be anything as, as gravity. But there seems to be some sort of force that is pushing you back into your seat or pushing, you know, whether you're going horizontal or vertical. And what I mean by that is it can't be completely, the reason why I use the airplane reference is that density, the atmosphere density that doesn't really apply inside the capsule of, or the cockpit of a, of a fighter. And it, yeah, I know the, a, you know, a sports car isn't exactly airtight, but it's tight enough that the same thing applies there. So whether you're going horizontal or vertical, and yes, I do believe in, in density. Of course, the density is a real thing, but it's, uh, I don't think it's the only thing which I talked, I said to the guys last night during that fun interview. So let's move on to the next one. Next one is called My Truth About the Moon Landing Poster. That's an interesting poster. Uh, my poster for your show. I hope you can rotate it. If not, let me know. I realize the poster is a kind of, it's like a crescent moon. I realize that no one can discover everything God is doing under the sun. Not even the wisest people discover everything no matter what they claim. Hmm. It's interesting. I like it. So it's a cool poster. You know what? I'm going to save it. I will. That's from Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. And I will put that into my slideshow. This one's called Space Suits Vacuum Chamber. Mark, have you seen this one or Space Suits? See you in Denver, Ryan. And... Let me take a quick look, and it's fake space vacuum versus the water above. Yeah, it was January 2017. I already gave it a thumbs up. It's got 61, wow, 61,000 views even today. It's got 941 up, 131 down. So, like it. Yep, I have seen it. Thank you for that. This one's called OMG, Big Lie by NASA again. Yep, that's Earthrise, uh, taken from supposedly the, the JAXA satellite. That was flying over the moon. Uh, this magnificent image of our blue planet rising over the moon's limb was made by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter in October 2015. Actually, I think it was JAXA. Pretty sure it was JAXA. Um, when the spacecraft flew about 134 kilometers above the moon's far side. Uh, and the guy says, this is so clearly a fake shot. Uh, just look at the water in the blue marbled circle. Yeah, it's terrible. And that was sent to me by Holistic Health Advisor. Yeah, I hate that picture. Ugh, terrible. Production value is not good. This one's called Mark Sargent. Hmm, I don't get many of these. Hello, Mark. I have followed your video postings for about a year now. For five years, I was employed as a land surveyor. It was very hard for me to understand how my equipment was communicating with satellites. When acquiring elevations between two points, I suppose an arc distance is given in relation to the geodetic file. This geodetic file is unique to the state plane zone in that specific area. When trying to get the measurement of the shortest distance between two points, cutting through the curve, I found that my state-of-the-art equipment was not able to give that info to me. In geometry, that straight distance should be calculated before the arc distance is calculated. The equipment gives so much useless info that if it were possible to give the straight distance, it would. 
it is not able to give any other distance because the distance it does give is not the curved distance, <laughs> but the straight. Wow. Sorry, that, that sounded like a um, um, Mr. Brady quote where he repeats the same word a lot in the same sentence. Uh, he used dis the word distance a lot in that in that paragraph. Uh, but thank you. That was from Renee. Thank you, Renee. Uh, very, very good to know. Interesting. This one's called a question. Hi, Mark. Has anyone ever checked the earth curve calculator for accuracy? Just the regular old one at uh, GitHub, blah, blah, blah. If so, how do we check it out to make sure the math is correct? I'm seeing a huge discrepancy between percent lean and feet drop in skylines and having a hard time believing their globe math would suck so bad and make no sense. Geometry does make sense, right? So now I'm wondering how to check the calculator ma mathematically for accuracy. Do you know how to? Thanks, Sydney. And so this is a woman, Sydney, down in California. And I met her also at the Denver conference and LA meetups and we, we've met. Uh, and I don't know. Um, as far as the calculator, checking it mathematically for accuracy, I, I, I don't know how I would do that. Um, that's something that I think an outside party would have to do. It wouldn't be me. I will, I will put the feelers out there, see if anybody knows. And if you're listening to this and you're pretty good at math, let me know. I don't know how we could we could check that though. This one's called Sunlight Hits Coffee Table. Mark, on one of your previous shows, someone mentioned that their friend had a coffee table that goes fully illuminated the same time every year. There's hundreds of stone circles and chambered calms. Can't carns? What is that word? Carns? All over the UK, Scotland world that line up once per year with various sun positions. Almost like someone in the past was trying to tell us something. And like the maze how chambered car c a i r n cairn boy i have to learn new stuff every day in the Orkney islands overview stand in awe of one of europe's finest chambered tombs built some five thousand years ago incredibly the entrance passage to mace how is aligned with the setting of the midwinter sun so that the light illuminates the tomb's interior that's from rob mckenzie staying ahead of the curve cool Thank you for that. Interesting. This one's called Finding Another Flat Earther in Seattle. Hi, Mark. I've been listening to your stuff on YouTube for a while and was wondering if you knew of any good context in the Seattle area for meetup on the subject. That's from Dan. Uh, yeah, Dan, there's a ton. I've done, what, five meetups in Seattle? Maybe even more? I'm Six, maybe? Um, in various places, South Seattle, North Seattle. The last one I did was up in Lake Stevens. Uh, that's way north. That's north of uh, Everett. And you, uh, all you have to do is type in a uh, flat earth meetup, Washington or flat earth meetup, Seattle, uh, and, and the contact information for all the people that are involved there uh, are either in the comment section. I usually pin the contact information in comments, or it will be at the end of the video. So, and that's the same with any, any meetup, any meetup that I do a promo for. In fact, I've got an entire, if you want to know a big list of contact people that are out there, just go to my playlist called Flat Earth Meetups uh, 2015 to present, and you'll see, you know, several hundred meetups that I have posted in their promos, and there's contact infos for, for every single one. That's probably the easiest way to get to it. In fact, maybe I'll just send him the link to that, and he can go through it himself. This one's called The Usual Request, Please. Hi, Mark. My name is Allison Lauder, and I've been a flat earther for around two years. I'm relatively new to your marvelous work, which I thoroughly enjoy. You're so eloquent and well-versed. I don't know about that. Uh, could you kindly send me the 12 slides, the five questions, the survivor kit? I am probably got all that wrong, but you're clever, so you'll know what I mean. Thank you, Mark, and keep up the great work. Blessings from Hong Kong. Um, Allison. Did I send it? Yeah. I did. I sent that to her. This one's called New Philippine Airlines Flight Proof of the Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I really hope that you get to see this and you can make a cool video out of it. Philippine Airlines just released a press statement that it will now offer a 16-hour straight flight from Manila to New York and actually said it'll be passing through the North Pole. See below screenshot of actual press release. My husband made his own plots of the flight path to clearly show that this is only possible on a flat Earth. Incidentally, we have just realized we've been traveling for 26 years and I don't think we've ever encountered 
uh, any other airline besides Philippine Airlines that offers straight flights to many of the destinations, including Los Angeles, London, etc. And sure enough, yeah, Manila to New York City, straight, straight shot goes right over the North Pole. Well, not right over the North Pole. It goes to the to the right of it a bit. And by on this map, you know, several hundred miles at the very least. But on the globe, it's uh, it's different. On a globe, it's this big curving arc uh, that that doesn't doesn't go over the North Pole. So how does that happen? Nice, nice. That's really cool. Thank you for that. It's really cool. This one's called 12 Picks and Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Could you please send me the 12 Picks slideshow and survival guide? I'm a Hungarian flat earth believer currently living in Connecticut. Connecticut. Thank you very much, Laz. Oh, by the way, I got to mention, there you go. Connecticut, right? Nobody uses it. That C is like never pronounced. It's spelled C-O-N-N-E-C-T, like connect, um, I-C-U-T. But most people pronounce it Connecticut. They leave out the C. Why is that important? Because it, I know I get grief because I say the word picture instead of picture, but that's just because it sounds like I'm over enunciating it when I throw in the C there. Sorry, picture, I still like it. It's quick, it's, it rolls off the tongue, it's easy. This one's called China plans to launch an artificial moon to light up the night skies. And that is an article out of Time Magazine and it was posted Back on October 19th, you can look up the article and they say they're going to try to do this by next year, or I'm sorry, 2020, illuminate city streets after dark. How they are going to do this? I don't know. An illuminated satellite will bear a reflective coating to cast sunlight back on the earth, which will supplement street lights at night. Uh, wow. Scientists estimated it could be eight times more luminous than the actual original moon. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, we'll see if that happens. Don't think so. But hey, you know, weird things have happened, I think. This one's called Tom from Shelton. Mark, why would the governments shoot up nuclear? Oh, wow. The way he spelled nuclear. I got to I gotta mention this. N-U-K-E-U-L-E-R. <laughs> that's even better. That's the American, what Americans do. Because remember, what I used to catch grief because I would say nuclear and now I'm trying to really force myself to say nuclear because uh, it's spelled N-U-clear, right? Uh, but the short version of it, this is what Americans do because we invented it. Uh, the short version is what? Nuke. How do you spell it? N-U-K-E. Okay, well then what's the plural version? You know, what's the what's the long version of that? Well, it's N-U-K-U-L-E-R. He spelled it even different than that. Sorry. Rocket bombs to break through the firmament operation fishbowl uh, in the 50s, if broke through, could be the end of the enclosed flat system that we live in. Also, what did Carl Sagan know about the truth of the world? All the talk in this weekly show series, and there is no space. The PhD lady, <laughs> PhD lady, science channel, uh, Michelli says the world is a globe. Amazing, amazing graduating people with PhDs do not know the truth of the globe versus flat earth. Thank you for your input. And that's from Thomas. And yeah, I, I know, look, if you, what we believe the world that is presented to us and the believe, we believe the world that is taught to us. So if you're an instructor that instructs people on what the world looks like, what, what do you think they're going to say? They, they have to go with the majority, which has been changing as of late. This one's called free full length video presentation. Hello, Mark. I hope you will be able to help me answer this email from Steve. I've watched this creation film clip he sent me and feel that it is garbage. However, I'm not scientifically or mathematically well-trained, so maybe I've missed some truth. I spent two years studying the flat earth with a brother in Christ, and we feel compelled to agree we're not on a spinning ball and that the earth is stationary as the Bible teaches. There is not one scripture to support a spinning globe. I've watched the Jesuit conspiracy about the Masonic Vatican astronomer's deception, your film clips on the flat earth clues, the Alberta FE conference, August of 2018, a Rob Skiba's Amsterdam 2017 conference, also Pastor Dean Odell's teaching, and Robbie Davidson on Celebrate Truth Channel. All these and several others are, for me, overwhelming evidence that the earth is stationary and flat under the firmament. Genesis 1. Looking forward to hearing from you and perhaps hearing from one YouTube I can send to Steve to, br to bring him into truth. He's had several from me in the past which have reacted very angrily 
I'm amazed he's responded to me after several months of trying to put me right. Many blessings. Shalom, Helen. Uh, P.S. I think you are all doing amazing work. Thank you, Helen. That is very much appreciated. And maybe I will send her the flatter shortlist for new people. That tends to go do very well. And also the documentary behind the curve because i mean seriously that's a mainstream documentary it's not meant for flat earthers and it puts a lot of questions in their head okay we're winding down let's see if we can find a fun one to end on uh this one's called just wondering mr mark i heard an interview with miss Oversloot, the grounded pilot and you were going to send her a link to buy a flat earth t-shirt can you please send me that link i like to buy a shirt but to, but want to support the right peeps thanks john I will send that over to the peanut gallery because his daughter sells shirts. I don't get a dime from him, but that's fine. I'm just about the cause. Again, I don't want to be rich. I don't want to be famous. I want to be right. For me, that's the juice. That's what I wake up. The reason why I wake up really is to see if I can change the world. If I can do it anonymously, that'd be awesome. But unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. This one's called Don't Judge Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Thought you might like this. Rob McKenzie staying here of the curve. And it's Ronald McDonald shoes. And it says, before you judge Neil deGrasse Tyson, watch him walk a mile in his shoes. Oh, I get it. Clown shoes. Oh, it's funny. It's funny. It's good. I like it. Um, all right. Can we, is that, should, what, what one are we going to end on here? Uh, let's do watch, let's do Navy railgun. U.S. Navy giant electromagnetic railgun proves flat earth as if we need more. Okay, let's do this one. We'll, we'll end on this one. Uh, hi, Mark. First of all, let me say I'm a fellow seeker of the truth. And I think and feel you are a beacon of light in what used to be the dark times because the light is now illuminating the farthest regions of our plane. I have to ask you if you've seen this diagram showing the range of a rail gun, 400 kilometers. It's a projectile, a solid metal missile looking object with no ability to steer or navigate in any direction other than in a straight line. How does it steer down range at 12,000 meters uh, of curvature over 400 kilometers distance? It's nuts. Yeah, 12,000 meters. That's ridiculous. Yeah, the rail gun. If you get, if you get a chance, look it up. Uh, anyways, just thought I would gauge your opinion and see if you could find out in, if any way personal, any Navy people might have an explanation or watch them have an epiphany in front of your eyes that the earth is indeed not a globe. Peace and light to you. Kind regards and respect, Craig. Yeah, the, the United States Navy has been touting this rail gun that they put on ships for some time now. And it, the, the thing is, it fires very, very, very fast. And because it fires fast, it has an amazing range. But the thing is, you can't guide it. It's super quick. But so, yeah, 400 kilometers would be 12, 12 and a half thousand meters of curvature. So how are you getting, how are you, how are you doing that exactly? Hmm? Can't be a lob shot. Remember, it's, a, it's literally a flat trajectory. So all right, there you go. Uh, thanks for everyone who wrote in during this oh so special 100th episode of emails and uh, thanks for everyone's going to write into the future remember my email address is m sergeant 23 at comcast.net that's m s a r g e n t 23 at comcast.net and until next time guys stay flat <laughs>